The views and opinions expressed on my story, Living with Lupus Podcast, represents each person's individual experience. By listening to this podcast or reading our blog, you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others. As always, consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks, and I'm so glad that you could join me this Tuesday. That's right. I said Tuesday, January the 12th, 2021. Hey, let me ask you a question. Have you ever been on hydroxychloroquine, better known as Plaquenil? And if so, did you experience flares if you tapered down or stopped the medication completely? That's what we'll be talking about today. And also, did you know that stress worsens kidney function in African Americans? That's right. So you know what I want you to do? All the way from the United States to my neighbors over in Alberta, Canada. Get ready to grab your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, and to my listeners, late at night. Now, you know I appreciate you, so get ready to grab your favorite glass of wine and join the conversation right here on My Story, Living with Lupus Podcast. The Charlie E. and Minnie P. Hendricks Foundation for Chronic Illness Awareness, giving hope and empowering those who suffer with chronic illness. See one, reach one, educate one to empower the masses. You can contact the foundation at 313. 313- Three zero three nine two one seven, or visit their website at https colon forward slash forward slash c e m p h foundation dot com. This is a five hundred one c three organization. No one should live in lack. All contributions are tax deductible. All right, and we are back. And we're talking about who flares when SLE patients stop hydroxychloroquine. Flares more likely among minorities, younger patients, and those taking steroids. Now, baseline factors including age, race, and steroid use were predictive of flares in patients with systemic lupus erythematosus, better known as SLE, who tapered or discontinued treatment with hydroxychloroquine, Canadian researchers found. Now, in a multivariable analysis, the adjusted hazard ratio for flare was 
seven four or 95% among patients who tapered their hydroxychloroquine and had been on prednisone at baseline, um, according to McGill University in Montreal. That's right. Now, when I was on hydroxychloroquine and they took me off, told me to to just stop completely, I noticed that the flares became more frequently. Now, among patients who discontinued the drug, the risk for flare was increased for Black patients and for those who were age 25 and younger at the time of SLE diagnosis. The researchers reported online in Arthritis Care and Research. Now, although the study was originally motivated by the desire to better understand personalized therapy in SLE, our findings take on new importance in the current setting where physicians and patients may face shortages of hydroxychloroquine due to interest in this drug as a potential therapy for the pandemic. In addition, patients discontinue or cut back on hydroxychloroquine for other reasons, including the potential for retinal toxicity, which can develop in one-fifth of patients using the drug long-term. And that's what happened to me. I developed retinal toxicity due to being on hydroxychloroquine from 2004 up until, uh, oh gosh, had to have been um, 2011 is when they discovered that it was doing more harm than good to my body. Okay, now, therefore, to explore the effects of tapering or discontinuing hydroxychloroquine among patients with SLE. The researchers analyzed data from five clinical cohorts in Canada for patients enrolled during the years 1999 to 2019. The primary endpoint was a composite outcome of events representative of SLE flare, which included an increase of at least four points on the SLE disease activity index, hospitalization for SLE and or augmented SLE therapy, which simply means restart or dosage increase in hydroxychloroquine or new start of prednisone, immunosuppressants, or biologics. Among the 1,389 patients enrolled in the five cohorts, 96.8% had used hydroxychloroquine. Of these, 398 reduced their dose and 395 discontinued the drug. Among more than 600 patients who remained on hydroxychloroquine therapy, 395 were chosen as matched controls based on disease duration and time on the drug. The majority of the patients were women. Median age at SLE diagnosis was 31 years old and three quarters were white. 
median score on the SLEDAI at baseline was 2, and median time on hydroxychloroquine was 2.3 years. SLEDAI scores of 4 or higher were seen in 46.7% of those who tapered in 31.6% of those who discontinued and in 40.2% of those who remained on treatment. The use of prednisone at baseline was reported in 19.8% of patients who tapered their dose in 10.6% of those who discontinued and in 26.1% of those who maintained their hydroxychloroquine. The primary flare outcome was observed in 200 and 61 patients who tapered for 35.7 events per 100 person years and 226 patients who discontinued for 29 events per 100 person years and in 97 patients who remained on therapy for 16.1 events per 100 person years. Among patients who remained on their hydroxychloroquine, risk factors for flare were First Nation ethnicity and the use of baseline immunosuppressants. Among the individual components of the flare endpoint, the most common outcome was a need for augmented SLE treatment reported in 52.8% of those tapering, 48.9% of those discontinuing, and 17.2% of those remaining on treatment, an increase of four or more points on the SLEDAI activity disease was observed in 19.4% of those tapering, 20.2% of those discontinuing, and 10.3% of those maintaining treatment. Hospitalization for SLE was seen in 0.8% after tapering, 0.6% after discontinuing, and 0.3% of those maintaining treatment. When we return, we'll finish up So stay with me. If you would like to appear on an episode of My Story Living with Lupus, you can contact us at mystorylivingwithlupus at gmail.com. Also visit us on our Instagram page and also our website, My Story Living with Lupus. All right, and we're back. And I'm so glad you stuck around to continue on this subject. Now, in discussing their findings, the researchers noted that prednisone use typically is considered a marker of more severe disease and was predictive of flare as was a SLEDAI score of four, which means active disease or higher. These findings confirm clinical intuition that patients 
with active disease are more likely to have poor outcomes, especially need the therapy augmentation they noted. They also pointed out that non-white patients were at greater risk in all groups, which may reflect genetic and innate disease characteristics, but may also reflect barriers to care and social cultural factors such as medication adherence. The identification of multiple demographic and clinical predictors of poor outcomes after hydroxychloroquine taper or discontinuation may be useful in personalizing decisions for SLE patients and their physicians around medication de-escalation or maintenance as well as monitoring for flares when hydroxychloroquine tapering or stopping is needed, such as in the current setting of potential hydroxychloroquine shortages due to interest in this drug as a therapy for the virus. A limitation of the study was the lack of information on reasons for tapering and discontinuing treatment, they noted. Now, I'll pose the question again. How many have either been on hydroxychloroquine and it did not work, so you had to stop, and all of a sudden you experience flares? How many have been on hydroxychloroquine and had to taper off of the drug? As I stated earlier, for myself, I was abruptly stopped from taking um, hydroxychloroquine due to the retinal toxicity, and um, it was causing my body more harm than good. So, did I experience um, the flares? Yes, I did experience flares, but... um. Oh, I'll tell you like this. Yeah, I experienced the flares. Um, They were much more intense. And also, it was like um, when I was taking prednisone and I told the doctor that I wasn't going to take it anymore and that, that I had stopped taking it because I did not like the reaction mentally that prednisone was causing. And when I stopped taking the hydroxychloroquine, now this is only me, I'm only speaking of myself. I had that same feeling coming down off of hydroxychloroquine. So if someone was to tell me, oh no, it doesn't cause any, um, psychological issues like um, prednisone does. Now, I know people that take prednisone that um, are something else to deal with while they're on it. And if they are off of it for a long period of time, they're just downright evil. And I mean evil. And that's one reason why I stopped prednisone. And um, as I stated, that's why um, when I stopped the hydroxychloroquine, it gave me that same kind of, of feeling, that evil feeling. You may think I'm lying, but everybody's body's um, physical body um, handles things differently. You know, 
Um, it's not a one size fits all when it comes to any medication, but it made me really evil and, um, along with causing more, um, damage to my body. Stick with me when we return. Let's see. What will we be discussing? Do you remember what I stated we will be discussing? We will discuss how stress worsens kidney functions in African Americans. So stay with me. Well, I thank you for joining me for another episode of My Story Living with Lupus Podcast. And before I go, I want to leave you with these words. Always end the day with a positive thought. No matter how hard things were, tomorrow's a fresh opportunity to make it better. Hope you have a great week, and I'll see you this Friday for another episode of My Story, Living with Lupus Podcast. I'm your host, Susan Hendricks. Have a great week. and opinions expressed on my story living with lupus podcast represents each person's individual experience by listening to this podcast or reading our blog you agree not to use this podcast or blog as medical advice to treat any medical condition in either yourself or others as always Consult your own physician for any medical issues that you may be having. My Story Living with Lupus podcast is officially trademarked, all rights reserved. Mm -hmm.